Hello, world. Last episode, we masqueraded ourselves as a big daddy, and we are now heading to the proving grounds. At the end of it, we'll be Frank Fontaine. Let's go. The little ones will lead you to Fontaine. Hurry, Mr. But B. you must protect them. I can see the angel dancing in the sky. So they are physically free of disease to gather. Too strong a mental condition is still holds them to their terrible task. Or sin such as you. You can never atone. So I'm actually really glad that the Proving Grounds has these bodies and I have to fight here because otherwise I wouldn't get a chance to talk. It's mostly just uh, people that I don't want to interrupt talking to me for story purposes, so. This is about the only chance I'll get to speak. I actually like the Proving Grounds. A lot of people hate the Proving Grounds, 
And I hate it too. I think that this is a very, very annoying rendition of how to do the whole protect the little sister while she gathers thing. Uh, of course, the little sister has her own life bar, which is annoying. If she dies, you gotta get a new one out of the vent, and then you just end up doing the same harvest over and over again. All of this is just a drain on your ammunition. You have to do it right the first time or reload. But it's important that this is the way that it is, because now we can, you know, move on to Bioshock 2 with so much more information about how this style of gameplay should go. Because Bioshock 2 does this exact same mission all throughout its um, entire storyline, and it does it very effectively. Something I want to give a shout out to is the design of that damn vent. Whoever designed that stupid air vent, just the fact that it's a little bit raised off the floor so in the vent of flooding air can still get through, the fact that it's a big hole that a little girl can crawl through, it, its look and its overall just, it fits the theme of this entire city uh, perfectly so it never looks out of place. But it's iconic in its shape, its design. When you see that thing, you know you're in Rapture. I just love it. I love pretty much all of it. The archways, all the different um, designs of the finishing on all the buildings and stuff. It makes you feel like you're in a whole, a whole world, you know? It's like its own world is apart from everything else. And yet, it still feels perfectly natural. You could still navigate this and not say, Oh, I'm on an alien planet. It still feels like a, a real city that could exist, and I just love it. To this day, I have no explanation for why that Big Daddy has a bone to pick with me. I think he's, like, smart enough to understand that I'm just some guy in a suit. I think he gets that I'm not a Big Daddy, but I'm with a little sister, but something's wrong with her, she's not the way she's supposed to be, someone's rescued her. I, I don't know. I don't know why he has a bone to pick with me here, but I kinda love it, because th on the first playthrough, that was the most terrifying thought I could ever have in my head. That there was a big daddy out to kill me, and I wasn't going to have the advantage of the first blow, you know? All throughout this whole game, every single big daddy fight, I was uh, initiating combat. I had the ultimate advantage, and usually that's the most terrifying part about this game, is when you accidentally make a big daddy mad, and you suddenly lose control. And now it's just announcing to me that, oh no, there's one out there, and he's already mad at you. And you're like, but... Uh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my 
be a slowpoke, Mr. B. Angels don't wait for slowpoke. <laughs> So what is the Proving Grounds exactly? It's never really said in-game lore that heavily, because there's no tape recorders here in the last portion. Uh, it's very short, there's not a whole lot to explore, there's not a whole lot to do, there's no chances for me getting Adam. I don't even get Adam from her harvesting these corpses, because she's not a little sister anymore, she's just a child who thinks she's a little sister. Uh, you know, now that she's been rescued. So, what is this place? The most I can figure out from uh, literally just getting online and checking is that the Proving Grounds was once a museum, and after the war started, they turned it into a testing area for little sisters and big daddies, just to run everything through the works and make sure it was functional before, you know, sending them out to the meat grinder that was the uh, war happening in Rapture. A slowpoke, Mr. B. Angels don't wait for slowpokes. So there it is, the most terrifying thing in the first Bioshock is this big daddy bursting through the wall to come and kill you. Apparently, they kept this in at the last uh, part of the game just because it was some cut content from an original Big Daddy design in which they had two uh, kind of thumper drills on each hand in which they would burst through the wall and try to kill you. Instead they settled for, well, he already has a drill, why does he need thumper drills? And uh, instead it's this guy bursting through the wall to try to kill you. And they put it at the end of the game so that you wouldn't constantly be looking out for walls where a Big Daddy or someone's going to burst through and kill you because that that wasn't going to happen. They just didn't have the setup for that. So. It's just a fun little thing to experience at the very end of the game here at the Proving Grounds. It, it feels like the Proving Grounds is filled with a lot of different ideals for cut content, and they just pop them at the end of the game. That way, it doesn't get in the way of the game's functionality, but you still get to play with them. Hurry! Hurry, Mr. Bubbles! Better for the girls to be with you. Better with you than alone. Alone in the crawling darkness. Don't be a slowpoke, Mr. B. Angels don't wait for slowpokes. Hurry, Mr. B. I can see the angel dancing in the sky. First, this puzzle is impossible, and I accidentally trigger an alarm. Second, Frank Fontaine is an idiot. Let's have another rousing round of me calling him an idiot. Uh, his plan is to inject himself with the deadly addictive substance that slowly turns you into goo. It gives you superpowers in the meantime, but it will eventually kill you. And use it to what? Kill me and then stand in the destroyed city that's slowly losing oxygen and water and everything else that's slowly being torn apart. Uh, and what is he going to do when he gets to the sur surface and people point out is like, hey, uh, you've injected yourself with something that's turned you into kind of a scary monster. Is there any plan past that? A 
fountain is nearby. You are reaching a point now. Fontaine waits above. There will be no going back from here. Make sure you are ready to face him before moving on. Alright, for the last time in Bioshock 1, at least, I'm going to ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me my eternal war against the YouTube algorithmo. And with that, let's get back to the action. I remember when me and the crowd put you in that sub. You were no more than two. You were my ace in the hole. But you were also the closest thing I ever had to a son. And that's why this hurts. Betrayal, kid. Life ain't strictly business.
this? I'm barely getting started! I had you built! I sent you topside! I called you back, showed you what you was, what you was capable of! Even that life you thought you had, that was something I dreamed up and had tattooed inside your head! Now, if you don't call that family, I know what it is! And now... They offered you this city. And you refused it. And what did you do instead? What I've come to expect of you. You saved them. You gave them the one thing that was stolen from them. A chance. A chance to learn, to find love, to live. And in the end, what was your reward? You never said, but I think I know. A family. Welp, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate your viewership. I actually really loved making um, vi a video series on Bioshock 1. It's my first video series that has a definite end. Uh, usually my videos are things on Minecraft, Fallout, you know. I've, I've tried making videos in the past and they always had no determined end to them. I could just keep on making them forever and then stop whenever I felt like it. Uh, that's not the case for Bioshock. Bioshock is a rail shooter. It's a game with a beginning, middle, and end, and so too must anything you do on it have a beginning, middle, and end. And now we're at the end. I feel really awesome about it. I just love making... I've been loving picking up the hobby of making YouTube videos and putting them on the internet and stuff, and I'd really like to do more. I plan on starting a playthrough of Bioshock 2 soon. Now, as for Bioshock 1, I love it. I love Bioshock 1. I think it has so many amazing ideas inside of it. I love the idea of this hidden underwater city beneath the waves. You have to go to a lighthouse that is just on this one little plateau of rocks in the middle of the ocean, and it'll take you down uh, next to where there's a huge underwater city and stuff. I just love that idea. I think that's so creative. And I love that Bioshock, everyone says, oh, it's a complete game, it doesn't really need a sequel. No, it doesn't need a sequel, but it does everything in its power to set up a possible sequel. You have this huge city, it's underwater, you have all of these hundreds of buildings and caverns and stuff where people are living and trying to survive, you have Adam, you have Addiction, you have all of these different assets to play with if you were to ever make a sequel. And just because... Jack leaves with the little sisters and saves them doesn't mean the story's over. It is for him, but inevitably someone is going to find the city and the nightmare will repeat, giving you all the freedom to write and stuff in the world. But of course we know that happens eventually because there's a Bioshock 2 and a Bioshock Infinite, so... I could go on and on about how uh, awesome this game is, so... I'm just going to do exactly that until the credits run out. Maybe, I don't know. I do like the ending. I love the good ending. I don't really like the bad ending. Not because it's a bad ending. I'm okay with there existing an evil ending, but the bad ending feels so much cheaper. Like, legitimately, the quality in which you string together the bad ending feels so much cheaper than the good ending ending that you feel like it's a non-canonical ending. 
and it, it, it should be held as just as plausible as the other ending, but instead you look at it and you go, oh, uh, I got a fun Easter egg ending, I didn't get an actual ending. So that, that is a little bit of a downside. Maybe it wasn't as bad back in the day when monitors were smaller, because my monitor is huge and, you know, pixels and stuff. Maybe I wouldn't have noticed back in the day, but now I, I definitely notice the music, the musical difference, the difference in quality of what I'm seeing. It's all just, it all just feels like you got an Easter egg ending, not you got the bad ending that is just as valid as the other. You got the Easter egg ending. But I do love that I get to choose it, and it's not through like major gameplay events, it's actually through the side stuff that you don't really have to do that decides the ending. And I just love that. Bioshock also helped me develop a couple of basic rules I have for games, and if, if you follow these rules, I say it's a good game. If you uh, break some of these rules, I typically say it's a bad game. If you break one of these rules, you gotta really blow my socks off to get me to continue to say it's a good game. Uh, one of the rules is never change a gun's damage or a gun's capacity or a gun's functionality without changing the actual gun itself. Um, something in like Outer Worlds, you'll go there, you'll, you'll upgrade the capacity, the damage of your gun, you'll upgrade anything about your gun, nothing changes about the gun itself. It still looks like the same gun. In Bioshock is different. You pick up that revolver, upgrade its capacity, it doesn't have a cylinder anymore. It has to have a huge chain mechanism, something really sci-fi on the side. Every change to your weapons is physically represented in the appearance of the weapon, so that anyone can look at your screen and say, oh, you got that upgrade. That upgrade is the best upgrade in the game, or that upgrade is kind of over, overhyped. You should have gotten a different upgrade. But all of it is physically represented, and I think that is very important for all games, regardless of genre, regardless of what you're doing. No stat value should ever be hidden in just code alone. It should always be represented on the screen for the player. That way you're not just pumping more gameplay into the game without actually putting the work in to make the game good. Really, I could, I could mention a thousand different rules and a thousand things that Bioshock one does right, but you really just have to experience them for yourself. I would heavily suggest that this is a game you should play, especially if you want to see that bad ending, because I'll never show it to you. So, I guess for now I'm just going to stop talking. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Bioshock 1, because I enjoyed it immensely. I hope you enjoy my videos, because I really enjoy making them, and I'd love to make more. Consider subscribing, consider leaving a comment, and for now, I'm going to say bye-bye.